Hi, I'm Karthik. I'm a web developer and the founder of wpalgorithm.com. In this tutorial, I'll teach you how easy it is to build your own responsive WordPress header using Elementor Pro and the brand new framework called Elementor Flexbox. Now, I've made a couple of videos explaining Flexbox and if you haven't watched them, I'll leave links to those in the description. You can check them out. You need Elementor Pro for this tutorial. So if you don't have Elementor Pro, you can get it from the link in the description. So with that being said, I'll show you how easy it is to design your responsive header using Elementor Flexbox framework. Let's get into it. So in your Elementor dashboard, click on templates, click on add new, or you can use the theme builder. We'll do it the old way and select header from here. Let's call it and I'll just click on create template. Now we'll not use any of the default templates. We'll do it from the scratch. So I'll just click on this X button or close it off. All right. So this is the area and here we have this plus button. And by the way, in case you didn't know already, Flexbox needs to be enabled at the moment. Maybe in the future versions, it will come as a default, maybe around 3.8 Elementor or something. But for now you have to enable it and in order to enable it, you need to go to dashboard and in your Elementor settings, click on Elementor, click on experiments and you have to make sure that this is active and you need to click on save changes. So that needs to be done before you design anything using Elementor Flexbox. I made a couple of videos on Elementor Flexbox explaining the basics and things beyond the basics. Links to those videos will be in the description. You can check them out. Let's get back to the tutorial. Okay. So I'll just click on the plus button. I'll pick this row based layout or you can pick even this. Not a problem. So I'll just click on the widgets button. The first thing I need is a site logo. I'll simply drag it. So there's my logo. You can simply click on the container. Click on items and change the direction to row from here. So we have logo. Let's add a menu, nav menu. I'll just click and drag it. And all the elements are automatically positioned on the horizontal axis because we chose the direction as horizontal. Now don't worry about the spacing and all. You can really make it look really good just with the click of a button. I'll show you that in a bit. And next I want a button or a search field. So I'll just click and drag a search form I want it here so you have a search form you can also add a button maybe a call to action button or something so something like that so we have four elements the first one is logo the second one is nav menu third one is search bar and a call to action button maybe you can link it to any page on your site or maybe you can redirect or trigger a pop-up using this so you can click on the dynamic tags and you can do all that sort of stuff anyway so i'll just click on this container again notice that we just have one parent container and all of these are widgets so it's really an optimized way of doing things so i'll go to advanced tab let's add some padding maybe around 10 pixels or maybe 5 pixels would also do let's do 10 that way we all these elements have space around them and they look really good so i'll just click on the container again now back to layout, I'll click on items. You can align items onto the center. And when you do that, it happens in the vertical axis. You can see that a row direction is horizontal, but align items, it happens on the vertical axis. You don't have to individually do it per element. Again, this control is with Flexbox container. And the next setting that you need to arrange it's called Flexbox Justify Content and with just click of a button, boom, you have your header. You don't have to punch in your margin, padding, anything. You just select this and I think this layout looks better and just like that, you have a header. So I'll just click on entire site and publish it. So you just hit publish, add condition and select entire site. And just like that, this header will be applied to your whole site. And just like that, we designed our header. Now let's make it responsive. I'll click on the responsive mode button. Okay, we have our header here. And on desktop, it automatically looks good. 
because we're just following the Flexbox container, we just gave it a little padding. Now let's fix it for mobile and tablet in case we want to. So I'll rearrange terms in tablet layout. So I'll click on the nav menu. You can click on advanced. You can give it a custom order number or you can first send it to the last and we want the button to be last. So I'll click on the button again in the tablet layout. You can send it to the last. So this becomes the third one and the search box gets position onto the left or you can totally hide it in case you don't want this to appear. So you can do that as well. So this is the menu. This is the button. Again, the same thing we need to do it for the mobile as well. Now on mobile, all of them are positioned into different rows. Why is this happening? Well, it's because the content doesn't have enough space and it's automatically wrapping. So we'll click on the Flexbox container, go to items and we'll choose no wrap. Okay. So once we have no wrap, all the elements are positioned in the same direction of our container, which is row, but there's a little horizontal overflow happening. So I'll just click on the container again and in overflow tab under layout, click and choose hidden. So we don't want any container to be scrolling horizontally. That is a horrible user experience. So we'll hide that. Also, I think the button can go away. So in mobile, I'll just click on this button, go to responsive and there's a toggle called hide on mobile. I'll just click that. And if you minimize the side panel, the button is gone. You just have three elements and also our nav menu is behaving a little bit weird. So let's fix that. So all we need to do is to click on the nav menu and make sure that full width is selected. So that way all the elements come properly and you need to go to the style tab of nav menu, click on drop down and also choose a section or distance of the menu elements, right? Just adjust it based on the layout or the background of your section. I think this distance is fine with me. Even in tablet, the same thing. I think it looks good or maybe it can be 15 or something or just keep increasing it at some point you'll find it good so i think at this point it's good now click on the i button click on preview to see how this header actually looks like so this is how it looks like on desktop if you scale it down or if you move this horizontally it triggers the tablet layout a tablet breakpoint again let me scale it down and it looks good just like that you can change the alignment of the elements based on your requirement and in case you find problem with the nav menu coming down it might have to do something with the containers overflow property you can set it back to default if the container is giving you a problem just set it to default and see if the drop down menu is properly functioning and if it's not functioning maybe this is the real problem behind it or maybe it's a little bug sometimes it happens you can set it to hidden if I set the overflow to hidden let's test out the nav menu so that happens I think at this moment this is just a bug because it's not supposed to happen but if you set the overflow to hidden and if the drop down menu is not being displayed just set it back to default anyway we are hiding the mobile button on mobile and tablet devices or on mobile devices so not a problem there won't be any horizontal overflow problem. So we have our menu back and we have our layout back as well. So you don't have to worry much about anything. But this is not supposed to happen. Anyway, I think it's a bug. Maybe in future they'll fix it. But this is how you design a responsive header using nothing but Elementor Flexbox with just one container. And all the controls are within the container itself. You don't have to go to individual widget and position all of them thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up for more such videos check out elementor basics playlist and if you want to learn wordpress tutorials check out wordpress tutorial for beginners playlist on the channel and i'll catch you in the next one until then peace